yeah, this hub supports PoE power. Also, look at this. This is me in the Akara Home app controlling my Switch Bot Bot. This is a big step in the right direction for both Akara and for Mata. If you've already watched some M3 hub reviews, then you might have got the impression that this wasn't possible, and this is because they have literally added support for more Mata device types as of today. And when it comes to automations, I'm sure you know the feeling when your automations stop still work when your internet is down. This is just one of the many interesting features that this new hub has to offer. This is the new Akara M3 hub, which unlike most hubs, doesn't necessarily make your old M2 hub redundant, and also has even more functionality than its predecessor. They've changed the super light round spaceship for a still quite stylish square design, which is a little bit heavier, presumably so that they can squeeze all of the extra tech into it. This thing has Bluetooth, Zigbee, and the latest thread technology. It can of course control all of the Akara sensors that many of us have come to love, as well as the latest range of thread devices. In this video we're going to see how well suited it is to people just starting out their smart home journey, but also how useful it is for enthusiasts like me who already have a fully fledged smart home using Home Assistant. So let's dive in. There are so many different smart hubs to choose from, but Akara has been around for quite a while creating really good quality and good looking sensors. I was able to do things six years ago with Akara sensors that people still get excited about today. When I heard about this hub from CES 2024, I reached out to Akara to ask them to send me one of these M3 hubs when it was released. It's now available for you to buy, so thank you to Akara for sending me this so that I can tell you all about it. Let's first talk about the purpose of this hub. As you would expect, it's designed to primarily control Akara smart home devices, such as smart switches to control your lights, blind controllers and motion sensors, but not just Akara devices, and more on that in a minute. You use it to do the usual things like creating automations so that things just happen without you having to do anything, and of course you can control them from within their app, which is the Akara app. One of the more recent standards which enables local control is Matter, and this makes it easier for devices from other manufacturers to talk to each other. This hub acts as both a Matter bridge for Akara Zigbee devices and as a thread border router. So you don't need to worry about having to replace all of your old Akara devices, but as new thread devices come out, you'll be able to integrate these as well. This hub is also going to start allowing you to control some Matter devices from other manufacturers from within the Akara app. It's very early days on this, but this will definitely make their hub more appealing over time. At launch, they only supported a handful of devices, which was quite disappointing. But as I showed you at the beginning of the video, you should now also be able to integrate with other Matter devices, including contact sensors, occupancy sensors, light sensors, wall switches, and thermostats. In my test, I connected it to a Matter bridge with child devices, which I really wasn't expecting to work. This is classed as a lab feature, so there might still be some bugs. My test was with Matter Wi-Fi devices, as I only have a car of thread devices at the moment. If you have an Apple TV 4K or an Apple HomePod, then you can always connect your thread devices directly to that instead, whilst the car improves their support for thread devices. As with most smart home systems, there are going to be some things that this hub can't do, and you can of course link it to all the usual platforms and voice assistants, such as Google, Amazon, Apple, and a few others as well. As well as having Bluetooth, Zigbee and Thread, it also of course has Wi-Fi, so that you can connect it to your other devices. One of the things that I didn't like about the M2 hub was that when you connected it to Wi-Fi, it only supported 2.4 GHz. This in itself wasn't a main problem, but the main problem was is that you had to actually go into your router settings and disable 5 GHz Wi-Fi before it would actually connect successfully. My dad managed to do this surprisingly without any help, but I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that wouldn't know where to start with this. But thankfully we don't have to worry about this anymore because this new hub supports 5 GHz Wi-Fi as well. And of course, it also has an Ethernet port like the previous version. But unlike the previous version, it also supports PoE power, which I think is a great addition as it can allow for a really clean installation. If you've already got networking ports around your home, then you can just plug in one cable. 
PoE power support is something that many other hubs don't support. The Google and Amazon voice assistants don't support PoE, the Homey Pro doesn't, and the Home Assistant Green doesn't either. The hub also has a built-in speaker, which is ideal for a house alarm, and it's really quite loud, 95 decibels I believe. If your switches are running on a UPS, then it means that you could even keep some parts of your smart home running with a power outage, perhaps particularly handy if you're using some battery powered door sensors as a house alarm, then you'd still be able to do this even in an offline situation. Another thing you could do is you could pair it to a button to use it as a doorbell or you can even pair it with a flood sensor so that it could alert you when there's a water leak. Another feature this hub has which is something that has become quite common with hubs and that is having an infrared transmitter and receiver. I often don't use this feature because usually it's only usable from within the app of that brand of the hub. But Akara has done two really nice things. Firstly, if you control an AC unit, then it will expose that AC unit as an entity to matter. This means that you could, for example, control your AC unit from Apple Home with the Akara hub. And the other really clever thing is that it will actually listen out for infrared signals from your original remote and change the state of the device when that's been detected. Often the problem with IR blasters is that the statuses get out of sync when you can control it with the hub versus the remote control. With this approach it should help reduce the likelihood of them getting out of sync with each other. For some reason they've only been able to support one AC device which I think is a shame and I really hope they manage to get around this in the future. There's also no mention of it supporting other devices like TVs. The Matter standard can now support quite a few different types of devices so hopefully a car will be able to add support for these using Matter as well. Another thing that I think is a shame is that they have limited the AC functionality to a specific list of manufacturers. The list is fairly big, but mine isn't in that list. I'm not sure why they have done this really, because the app does allow you to program your own infrared devices. You just don't seem to be able to use these custom devices as an air conditioner. So I can use my aircon with this hub, but not through Matter. Now I mentioned earlier that if you have the M2 hub already, then you might want to keep it. If you have smart devices spread across your home and you don't have a strong Zigbee mesh network everywhere, then you could consider keeping these Zigbee devices connected to your M2 hub, and then the M3 hub will act as what they call an edge hub. This means that if the internet goes down, then your automations between the two hubs will continue to work. I imagine most of you will just swap out the old hub so that you don't have hubs everywhere and thankfully they have created a migration process so that you don't have to repair all of your devices if you go down this route instead. The Akara automations will continue to work as before without doing anything. I believe you do have to fix some of the HomeKit and Matter automations though. Although you might not want to keep both an M2 hub and an M3 hub, Akara has given you a reason to potentially buy a second M3 hub if you have the money for it and that is that you can have two m3 hubs work together whereby if one of them fails then the other one will automatically take over so you've basically got some redundancy i think this is a really neat idea i've only got one hub at the moment but if i do another collaboration with akara then i'll try and get them to send me another one so that i can test this feature out and show you how well it works so to take a look at the thread side of things, I have two of their thread devices. One is the window and door sensor P2, which has been out for quite a while. And the other is the motion and light sensor P2, which came out fairly recently. If you look at the Amazon reviews, you'll see that they are on average very good. And the bad reviews are generally where people are not really understanding what thread is and how it works. I think Akara has added to this confusion by releasing the M2 hub after these sensors, meaning that you couldn't actually use these sensors with the Akara hubs, because this is the first hub that supports thread. So hopefully now this will alleviate some of that confusion and they can use these devices with the Akara hub as well. Previously you would have had to use some other sort of thread border router such as the Apple TV 4K or the Apple HomePod. The downside of using the latest Akara thread sensors with a third party border router was that you couldn't change the sensitivity setting of the PIR. However I can't find this setting in the Akara app either and there doesn't seem to be an option to update their firmware. It does feel like they've released some of these products a bit too early and I do wish that they had waited a bit longer until everything was ready. 
There is bound to be a wave of new thread devices coming out this year and next, and I'm just hoping that they can start to become more competitive on price, because at the moment, Zigbee devices are still a very good and appealing choice for reliability and cost. So to summarize this hub, it has good potential, and if you love Acara products, then it might be worth getting so that you can support every type of Acara product imaginable, including their new thread devices. Clearly, they rushed the release of this hub, and I'm pleased that they have already listened to other reviews and managed to fast track additional matter support. I was going to initially recommend waiting six months or a year before buying it, particularly if you already have an Acara hub, but I actually think there are a lot of good reasons to buy it now. I'll leave an affiliate link in the description and it would be really helpful if you could use this as it'll help support the channel as I will get a small commission for using it. Well, please give the video a like and thanks until next time.